Hello everyone. Welcome to the video on reciprocity theorem. So let us see what is the statement for reciprocity theorem. So the statement is in a linear bilateral single source circuit, the ratio of excitation to response is constant when the position of the excitation and response are interchanged. So the statement starts that in a linear bilateral single source circuit. Single source means there must be only a one source of energy. There must not be more than one sources. So for example, if you see here, I, I can relate the reciprocity theorem to this cartoon that is present here. So this person is a source who is shouting here and he is the respondent. He is the person who is going to receive the particular noise. But in between a wall is present. So we have one source here. We have one response here. Response means the person who is at the output or is, who is receiving the output, we call that to be the response. So even if the source is shouting, the receiver is not able to hear anything because of the wall that is present here. Now try interchanging the position of this person and the source. So let me bring this person to this side. Let the person who shouts go to this side. If he shouts from this side too, the wall is going to stop the voice. So this respondent is not going to hear anything. So wherever the source is and the response is, whether they are placed in this manner or even if they are interchanged, the output is going to remain constant. That is what we mean by reciprocity theorem. And single source means only one person is shouting here. So he is alone the source. He is only the receiver of the source. He is not shouting on the other side. So he is just the receiver or the response. And he is called as the source which is present here. So even if I interchange the position of the person who shouts and the person who listens, because of the wall present in between, the output response is going to be the same. This we are going to apply to circuits and see how the reciprocity theorem works. Now let us understand the reciprocity theorem using two basic problems. In the first problem, the given statement is prove the reciprocity theorem for the two port network. So you see here a DC network is given. I call this to be DC because we have only resistive components that are no L or C inductors or capacitors that are present. So for this DC circuit, we are going to verify the reciprocity theorem. We have two ports given here, port 1 and port 2. So first let us try connecting a source to port 1 and let us check the output at port 2. In the next step, we will try connecting the source at port 2 and we will measure the output at port 1. If both the ratios remain the same, then we say that reciprocity theorem is verified for this particular circuit. Now let us start with the first step. So case 1, I am going to provide the excitation which is the input source at port 1 and we are going to measure the response as at port 2. So first step, I am going to connect the voltage source which is E to input and I am going to short circuit the port 2 in order to measure your output. So what we have done to the previous diagram, I have connected the voltage source to the input port and I am going to measure the output here. So we have short circuited this particular output port too. Now if you see this, this is similar to a mesh analysis. So we can assign three currents I1, I2 and I3. Now let us apply mesh analysis and try to find what is the output for case 1. So if you see in the circuit, there are three mesh currents, I1, I2, I3, and there is one voltage source connected to the first mesh. Then how are we going to write the matrix for this mesh analysis? So this is R11. 11 means within the first part, what are the two resistors available? It is 1 ohm plus 5 ohm. So it is 1 plus 5. This is minus R12. So what is R12? It is common to the part uh, portion 1 and portion 2. So the common resistor value is 5. So it is written as minus 5. This is minus R13. So which resistor is common to 1 and 3? It is this 1 ohm. So we write it as minus 1. Next one. Minus R21. So which is again common to 2 and 1? It is minus 5. R22 within the network means it is positive. So within 2 second mesh it is 5 plus 4. And then R23. 
so bit common to r2 and r3 so this is this is r this is second network this is the third part of the network so the common resistance value is minus 4 the third row minus r31 so r this is third one first part so the common resistance is minus 1 this part minus r32 so 32 what value is common it is minus 4 and plus r33 within the third part of the circuit what are the resistors available it is 1 plus 2 plus 4 so here you have written 1 plus 2 plus 4 and there are three currents i1 i2 and i3 and if you see the voltage only to the first part there is a voltage source so we write e only for the first part of the mesh for the second part there is no voltage source so it is zero once again for the third part there is no voltage source so it is zero so we write this as e 0 0 now simplify this particular matrix so this is 6 minus 5 minus 1 minus 5 plus 9 minus 4 minus 1 minus 4 and 7 into i1 i2 i3 is equal to e 0 0 now where do we measure the output it is across the second branch so to find i2 the current passing through here is nothing but the current i2 so to find I2, we are going to find del 2 by del. We are going to apply the law and calculate I2 by first finding the delta value and then finding delta 2 value and dividing delta 2 by delta that gives our required I2 value. So delta is nothing but the determinant of this matrix is what we call delta. So in the next step, we are going to simplify the given matrix. So, we are going to find delta. Delta is nothing but the matrix, the determinant of the matrix. So, if you find the determinant, I think you will be familiar how to find the determinant. So, this is plus minus plus. We know the sign conventions. So, the first one, this is going to be plus. This will be minus. This will be plus once again. So, plus of. Close this first row and first column. So, this will be 9 into 7. So, it is 9 into 7 minus of minus 4 into minus 4. Then, minus of, close this row and this column. So, it will be minus 1 into minus 4. Sorry, minus 5 into 7 minus minus 1 into minus 4. Again, plus of, close this row and column. So, it will be minus 5 into minus 4 minus of minus 1 into 9. When you simplify, we are getting the value to be 58. Next, we need to find what is del 2. So, del 2 means what we will do? Let me use the eraser. So del 2 means what do we do? We will remove the second column of the matrix. So this column I am going to remove. Instead of this column, I will be placing the voltage value. So voltage value is nothing but E00. Once I can find the determinant of this, we are getting the value to be 39E. So del 2 value is 39E. Del value is 58. Now let us find the output current. So output current I2 is delta 2 by delta. So it is 39E divided by 58. Now what is the reciprocity theorem state? The ratio of excitation to response must be same to the ratio of response to excitation. So in case one is excitation to response. So excitation means what is the input source? The input source is E. What is the response? What do you measure at the output? It is the current I. So, my input source is E divided by, what is the output current we have measured? It is 39E divided by 58. So, this E and E will get cancelled. When you reciprocate this, this becomes 58 divided by 39. So, in case 1, the ratio of excitation to response, we are getting it to be 58 by 39. So, this is the first part of your reciprocity theorem. Now, in case 2, what we are going to do? I have connected the output voltage, the source to port 2 and we are going to measure the input here and we are going to check whether the response is the same as in case 1. Fine. So, case 1, I have got it to be 58 by 39. Let us check whether we are getting the same in case 2 also. So, in step 1, I have connected E to the output. 
and I'm short circuiting the port 1 because we are going to measure the current now at port 1. Now step 2. So we know that there are three mesh currents here. Previously in case 1 we have named it as I1, I2 and I3. So in order to avoid confusion now we have named it as IA, IB and IC. And since the voltage source is here I have named this to be the first current, the second current IB and the third current IC. Now let us start writing the matrix. So this is for the first mesh exclusively. So for IA what are the resistors it is 5 plus 4 minus R12. So between 1 and 2 it is minus 5. Then minus R13. Between 1 and 3 it is minus 4. Then minus R21. So minus R21 means between this and this it is minus 5. R22. So R22 the value is 5 plus 1 is 6. Then R minus R23. So 2 and 3 the value is minus 1. The last row. Minus R31. So 31 is again minus 4, minus R32, so minus R32 means it is minus 1 and plus R33. So for the third mesh the values are 1 plus 4 plus 2 and the three currents are IA, IB and IC and only for IA this mesh we have the voltage source. Here there are no voltage sources. So this becomes E00. Now simplify this matrix and write. So it is 9 minus 5 minus 4 minus 5, 6, minus 1, minus 4, minus 3, 7 into I A I B I C. It is equal to E 0 0. Now which current is the output current for us? It is I B. So it is again delta 2. So we have to find delta B by delta in order to find what is I B which is your output current. Now in the next step we are finding what is delta value. So determinant of this particular matrix gives what is delta. So I am finding the determinant of this matrix. So we are getting the determinant value to be 58. And delta B from the circuit we know that this is where we need to measure the response. And what is the current here? It is IB. So IB means I will be replacing the second row with the voltage source value. So it is E00. So by Cramer's rule I am replacing this by E00 and we are finding delta B to be 39E. Now what is IB? It is delta B by delta. So 39E by 58 is what we get for the output current. Now again ratio of excitation to response. Excitation is E. So I am getting the excitation source to be of E and the response the answer that we have got is it is 39E divided by 58. So again this E, E gets cancelled. When you reciprocate this becomes 58 by 39. So in case 1 also the ratio of excitation to response was 58 by 39. And in case 2 also the ratio of excitation to response is 58 by 39. So therefore we have found that the ratio of excitation to response is same when the positions of excitation and response are interchanged. And hence we can say that the reciprocity theorem is proved. Right? So I hope you are clear on how to verify the reciprocity theorem. So first keep the source at one port, measure the response at the second port, find the ratio. Next interchange the position of the ratio and uh, response and the excitation which means the input and output and check whether again the ratio of input to output is the same. If both the ratios are the same then we can conclude that the reciprocity theorem is verified. Now let us start second problem. This is an AC circuit. So we can do it in a similar way. So here at the input we have a voltage source. So this is my excitation E as in the previous problem. And this is where we are going to measure the output. So in the first case keep the current as I1, I2, I3. Again solve using mesh analysis. Find the ratio of excitation to the output current. Find one particular answer. Next step what do you do? Move this input source here, move this voltage source here, sorry, move the current source here and move the input source here. Measure the current at this point by giving a source here and check whether the ratio is similar. If both the ratios are equal, then we can conclude that the reciprocity theorem is verified. So let us start with case 1. So we are going to find the output current which is Ix in the given circuit. So there are three mesh currents, I1, I2 and I3. 
as usual solve using machine analysis write the matrix so this is r11 alone so r11 alone means it is it is z11 here because it is a combination of r and l so 8 plus j4 and then minus r12 so minus j4 and between 1 and 3 is there any common element here and here there is no connection at all so it is 0 next one uh, minus r21 so 21 it is again minus j4 r22 r22 it is j4 plus 8 minus j8 and then minus r23 so minus r23 is minus of minus j8 so we are written here minus of minus j8 the third uh, third row minus r31 so once again between 3 and 1 there is no common element so it becomes 0 minus r32 so minus of minus j8 and r33 we have 3 minus j8 and 3 currents are there i1 i2 i3 and the source is only present for the first fetch so it is 50 angle 30 for the next this one and this one there are no voltage sources so it becomes 0 and 0 fine right now let us uh, simplify this and find out the ratio as we did in the previous problem so now this is in your degree mode we need to change it to a radian mode so how to change it to radian mode this angle we can manually write it as 50 into cos 30 plus j sin 30 so 50 the amplitude we keep it as such the angle of 30 we write it as cos 30 and plus j 50 sin 30 so find this value using the calculator and replace this in the matrix fine now as usual what is where which is the output current we need to measure so i x is nothing but it is the current i3 so we need to find del 3 divided by del in order to find what is i3 so first find what is the del value it is the determinant of this particular matrix solve these equations we know that j square is minus 1 so substitute all those values and find what is del value the next step find what is del 3 how do you find del 3 so this column i'm going to replace by this particular value so replace the third column alone once again solve the determinant and find a value and to find the output response find i3 which is del 3 by del and we are getting this particular value so this is the response that we have got now let us move on to the second case so here if you see in the question yeah we are asked to calculate i x so by calculating i x we are asked to prove the reciprocity theorem so in case one we have kept the source here and the output here and we have found i x value to be this particular value now in case two what we are going to do i am going to interchange the position of i x to be here and the source to be here and we will see whether we are obtaining the same current i x if both the currents are similar once again we can conclude that reciprocity theorem is verified so as usual we know write the mesh uh, matrix so again three currents i a i b and i c and here the voltage is zero again here it is zero for the third mesh we have voltage source to be 50 angle 30 so 50 angle 30 will be written as what it is 50 into cos 30 plus j sin 30 so it will be the same as what we calculated in the previous step so we have interchanged the position of source and response we have applied mesh analysis now in third step what we are doing i'm finding out what is del value and now which is the output current ia is only your ix current so i need to measure what is ia so del a by del gives us what is ia so replace this first column by this voltage value according to Kramer's rule so we have replaced the voltage value now solve the determinant to find what is ia now divide the two determinant values del a by sorry two del values del a by del to obtain what is the output current so if you see here ia is also 1.68 angle 62.6 and here what we measured was also 1.68 angle 62.6 so even after interchanging the position of source and response we can see that the current remains constant and hence what do we conclude once again the ratio of excitation of response is same when the position of excitation and responses are interchanged and hence we have verified the reciprocity theorem hope reciprocity theorem is clear to you 
So this is very easy to analyze. Just interchange the positions of source and response and check whether the responses are obtained to be the same. If they are same, we can conclude that the reciprocity theorem is verified. Thank you.